Hi there, Waltoners. I'm Jack. This is DSMI Newscast, and today's going to be a slightly different type of video as I'm going to be away for the next couple of days. So, therefore, I saw this as a perfect opportunity to give you all a sneak peek at some of the different types of content we've been creating for the DSMI Newscast Patreon. So, sit back and enjoy these very short previews of the Disney that never was and also What If Disney. Walt Disney Imagineering can be an extremely difficult place to understand what exactly is is going on and it's this very notion that we're going to be exploring in the Disney that never was but when it came to the planning and the building of Euro Disney in the late 1980s the decision was made to search for an alternative to Main Street USA with it being decided that Main Street USA would leap forward to the roaring 1920s with a Chicago themed Main Street instead complete with its own L train, speakeasies and jazz music booming down Main Street USA as you see this was the first era that had the Europeans fascinated by the new trends and culture that was being set in the United States. But here's the interesting thing. This L train, which used an extremely similar system to the People Mover, would also give passengers views into the windows and displays of the city of the future. But to the side of this building would have been an innocent looking flower shop front, which once you had entered, the walls would then rotate and reveal a cotton club style jazz hotspot. Anyways, you're now probably wondering why did this concept never get built? Well, it's basically because one day Michael Eisner saw... So that was a very short preview of the Disney that never was, with the usual videos being around five to six minutes long. And that's the video series where we discuss all the unbuilt or forgotten Disney attractions, rides, lands, and different concepts that Disney never built. And personally, I would have loved them to build the Chicago Main Street at Disneyland Paris. But either way, here's the next preview for What If Disney. The year is 1950. The Cold War has allowed a conflict to break out in the Korean Peninsula. CBS, the first TV channel to broadcast in color. And Silicon Valley are discovering the power of the transistor that will define the rest of the 20th century. And over in Burbank, California, Walt Disney is about to take the biggest risk of his career so far, with the release of Cinderella on February 15th, 1950. And it's this moment here that will forever change the course of the Walt Disney Company, and yet we're here to ask, what if Cinderella had bombed at the box office? With a $2.9 million budget and the first animated movie since 1942's Bambi, the bar was set extremely high, with this film being tasked with the seemingly insurmountable goal of saving the Disney company from potential bankruptcy. And yet, Cinderella blasted past $10 million at the box office, and was Disney's greatest theatrical success since Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937. However, much more than the commercial success, Cinderella had also garnered the critical acclaim that Walt Disney had previously sought, being referred to at the time in the reviews as a masterpiece. But all of this brings us back to the question of what if Cinderella had actually bombed at the box office instead? What if this movie had been met with such a tepid response and rejected for its oversimplification that an alternative timeline would have unfolded? So what major ramifications would this have had on the Walt Disney Company? that the Disney company would be so deep in debt that Walt and Roy Disney would have been forced to make the decision to either declare bankruptcy and start fresh, or they could have made drastic moves in retaining their Disney name and simply licensing out the character's merchandising rights and selling off the distribution rights to many of their short films and feature length animations as the advent of TV was coming and content was needed. So it's reasonable to say that this would have been a drastically scaled back version of the Disneyland that we saw in 1955. In conclusion, it could be argued that it was Cinderella, not Snow White, that had a much greater impact on creating the Walt Disney Company that we know today, as Cinderella directly impacted the Disney parks with the creation of Disneyland. 
and that was a preview of what you can expect from What If Disney, which is a kind of documentary series which are around 8 to 10 minutes long, where we discuss all of the different alternative histories and also the defining factors within the Walt Disney Company. But now, of course, it wouldn't be a DSMY newscast without a question. So it's over to you, Walt and Ears, as I would like to know which part of Disney history do you think was the most defining factor for the Walt Disney Company becoming the company that it is today. And of course, don't forget to put the timestamp of where the hidden Mickey appeared somewhere within this video, along with your suggestion or your comment to be in with a chance to win a DSMY newscast pin. And congratulations to these two winners from the previous two videos where we were discussing Walt Disney World's plans for the 50th anniversary and their nighttime entertainment, and also the breaking news video where we discussed the June 30th opening date for Toy Story Land. So with all of that being said, go ahead and subscribe down below, hit that notification icon, and if you'd like to check out DSMY Newscast on Patreon, I'll put a link down below in the description box. And if you've enjoyed today's video, give it a massive thumbs up, and I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.